we look at right now the college ranking, and nobody, after Georgia won the national championship, everybody thought that they, they were going to take two steps down. They lost a lot of players uh, in the draft this year, top-end players, top defensive players. But uh, defensively, this team is still beasting. Offensively, they still can run the ball. They still can throw the ball. And then you look at Ohio State, which obviously the quarterback play, Heisman candidate. Uh, Michigan, obviously number three. TCU took up, t- uh, took fourth right now in the uh, college voting. They should have been fourth to begin with. Yes. But, yeah. And yeah. then, then right. after Alabama get, gets knocked off this past week, uh, and falls to seven and two, and now LSU, which looked really bad in the beginning of the season, they just didn't look good. All of a sudden, jumps and uh, hops all the way as the seventh, seventh, seventh ranked right now. Uh, it's crazy. Tennessee, some people thought was the best team in the country a couple of weeks ago. Now all of a sudden they lose a game and they fall all the way out from the top four. Are you surprised that it keeps jumping back and forth, back and forth? But we all know it's Georgia, Ohio State for the, since the beginning of the season. When the first poll comes out, right? Everybody knows there's so much football to be played. It came out last Tuesday, a week ago, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Georgia and Tennessee, who are, what, one and three, they're playing each other. All right, so that we already know that somebody's going to drop out of that top four. Michigan and Ohio State are going to play the last Saturday in November. So somebody is going to drop out of there. And I know there was a lot of people that were up in arms. I could tell, uh, you know, at least half of you guys are up in arms that TCU wasn't ranked four. I was a little bit upset. I mean, when you look at strength of schedule and I know Oklahoma is not that that win over Oklahoma is not aging well. Um, The win over Kansas is not aging well. But at the time, they were top 20 teams and you've got to go with how they were ranked at the time. They they played four ranked teams in a row. And yeah, they had to go into overtime with Oklahoma State, but they're a good football team. They don't have a lot of NFL talent, but they're a good football team, and th- they're going to be tested this week. They're going to Austin, and if Quinn Ewers plays to the level that he should be playing at at Texas, I mean, that's going to be a hell of a battle. Going into Austin anytime is hard to win, uh, and if they can do it, they're going to prove that they belong in that college football playoffs. But I don't know if anybody from the Pac-12 – really belongs you know i mean it's what been six years since they've been, had a seat at the table i don't think and washington they, got in that year either penn state i thought should have gotten in that year i agree with you i 100 percent agree with you but you look and you say i thought early on in the season until utah lost a couple of games they were the most physical they were the most able to match up with a georgia and not not necessarily win i'm just saying be on the field and match up with an ohio state yet you know, they've got two losses. And you look at LSU and you say, well, you lost the opener to Florida State. Like, Florida State, eh. My and favorite it, football team. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're a Florida State guy? I'm a huge Florida State fan from the oh, 90s. I yeah. can't – you know what? Before I came on to it, if you're a Florida State guy, I can't believe <laughs> that you're comparing Sauce Gardner to, to Deion Sanders. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Stats say one thing, but prime time says a whole different I deal. Know. I know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, and, and Kinda you go throw back me under the bus. Doesn't age well. Oregon losing 49 to 3 doesn't age well. Tennessee, I know that they, they beat Alabama. They allowed 49 points in that game. Are you kidding me? Like, mm. what type of defense allows 49 points? I think the college football playoff committee is going to be pressed into some tough decisions at the end of the year, but there's so much football to be played between now and then. And that was my problem with Clemson. Like everyone put them at number four and like Clemson they only blows. dominated one game. <laughs> that, that is actually a good win. The NC state win they dominated was the only good win they had. And they should have lost to Syracuse. I know I, I last week, everybody's like, Oh, they're going to South bend. And, uh, yeah. They're going to South bend to lose. <laughs> they are not an offense that you can trust. Who's their quarterback. We don't even know who that is. I was going through a lot of even the top 10. There's a lot of those teams that I thought that could have, that would beat Clemson. They have one quality win. You have to start out number four and TCU. Like you were saying, has four top 15, top 20 wins. Yeah. So here's a question for you guys. All, all right, right. North Carolina. All right. If they run the table, they're a one loss team. Does an ACC champ get in to the college football playoffs? Because, you, you know, pretty soon you're only going to have a couple of teams that are undefeated. Right. Then you got to decide are you taking a one loss Pac 12 champ? Are you taking a one loss ACC champ? What are you doing with the Big 12? I mean, TCU right now is one of those undefeated teams. Do do we think they're going to be undefeated 
running the table all the way through. I think they're going to slip up, but it could be this weekend against Texas. We just talked about that. Michigan and Ohio State are going to have one. Somebody's going to have one loss between the two of them. Like, how does, if North Carolina runs the table, are they going to, you know, get into, is Mac Brown as old as he is? is he, are we going to see him dancing his way into the college football playoffs? <laughs> That's the same question, though, with Oregon, too, because it's the same It's the same position. Like, they're a one-loss Pac-12 team, and they're only lost to Georgia. Like, are you going to hold that against them? I, yeah, I know you said the 49-3 to is definitely a bad bad loss, but UNC's one loss to Notre Dame right now. How will they finish? And we know they've had some bad losses this year already, too. So that's, yeah. the, that's the big thing to look at. The other one that's interesting, too, is uh, one losses that might be – in the, in the SEC, too, it's like a second SEC team besides Georgia. Tennessee's right now in that boat, and also Ole Miss is in that boat, too. Now, if they beat Alabama, that could be a, a big thing leap for them this week. How about too. UCLA? UCLA is the same. We know, we right. know a couple of guys yes. that play for UCLA. Yeah, UCLA and USC are all going to be in that same boat, too. And Oregon's going to gain more if they do end up winning those games because th- their schedule gets harder now, too, so the wins will be more quality, too. It's now, so if in- USC beats Oregon, that's another question. It's too. so interesting how, how the board picks and, and, and chooses through points. You know, when, when, when you're looking at the SEC and, and the ACC, how do you describe, how do you, you know, you, you go from one point to the other and say, hey, this is, this is 30 points. This is 40 points. This is, how, do, how do they do that? I, I don't understand it. I would love to, to find out and sit in that room and listen to the process that they go through. I would love to sit in there and just argue with them because the arguments are going to be endless, right? It, yeah. it, it you could argue for a USC. You could argue for a UCLA. Now, obviously, those teams are going to play. You could argue for – and here's what it's going to come down to as well. We've seen one-loss teams get in there. We've seen Ohio State jump a Penn State to get in without playing a conference championship game. Michigan and Ohio State, if they meet at 11-0, and 0, which they both should, and that game is an instant classic. See, it comes down to the wire. Both teams are playing great. Don't we agree that – they're probably two of the best teams in the country, no matter who wins or loses that game. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, it, I mean, does does do we get two Big Ten teams in? We've seen two SEC teams. Yeah, and that, that's going to be the question because where, how strong will those remaining SEC teams? If Alabama loses a third game, does Tennessee's win against Alabama look that good anymore? Everybody loves Tennessee. Everybody loves Tennessee. And when they lost against Georgia, everybody said, "Well, they still they still have a chance." The only way they have a chance is either TC, TCU, Michigan, or Ohio State or Georgia loses a game. Well, and I don't think Georgia or Ohio State's losing a game but, this year. Yeah, and Tennessee's now in the same oh, boat uh, as the scenario you described. Ohio State will lose November 26th. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Let's not forget about that one. Yeah, we they know about last year. They had that one wrapped up last year, too. They came into the big house, and they got their ass handed to them. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny yo. This is a different Ohio State team, as you know. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, they, they, Jackson Smith and Jigba, like, is he going to play this year or not? That's true. Right. That's true. But well, it's funny. We actually had uh, we, one of the guys that used to call our show was, you know, they always, he always loved to bash Michigan because we have a Michigan fan that like, comments on our show a lot. And <laughs> he was saying, oh, there's no way that Michigan's going to beat Ohio State last year. And, <laughs> and they, they took it to them. So he, had to, he had to eat his words with that one. Oh, yeah. That was, a, that was an epic epic day uh, I went in I rushed the field because uh, that was before I was doing the color for the games mm-hmm. and so I rushed the field with my kids and I was dancing around and my kids said dad this is the happiest we have ever seen you my oldest at the time was 15 years old and I said you're right because it's the first time we beat these assholes in your <laughs> lifetime and I still stand by the fact that you guys got screwed in 2016 so <laughs> that uh, that first down that shouldn't have been a first down it's, it's debatable <laughs> it's debatable hey before i go though i want to ask you guys this question yeah. let's hear it because blake quorum is in the conversation for the heisman trophy mm-hmm. now he's not a quarterback so he probably won't win it there are other quarterbacks involved obviously bryce young cj stroud hendon hooker how about caleb williams yeah. if caleb williams was playing in the big 10 or if caleb williams was in the sec would he be the front runner right now for the Heisman Trophy? 
It's, it's an interesting question because do is he going to be able to take on those level of defenses too? Because we always talk about with Oklahoma, like Oklahoma when he was there, he got the cakewalk of defenses. Even though they were improved right. last year, would he have that same kind of tradition? Now a lot of people are saying that with the Pac-12 this year. A lot of these Pac-12 teams do not have great defenses, and that's the tough thing to tell. I don't know if he would have those kinds of numbers in the SEC or the Big Ten. Yeah, I mean, it, it, would he have those numbers? But he'd also have a heck of a lot more publicity. Mm. That's true. Now, the other question is, too, what team are you going to? You're not going to get helped up by Lincoln Riley and all those transfer guys they brought in, too. Travis Dye's really good. You got Jordan Addison's really good when he's healthy. So are you going to get that same level of talent with offensively, specifically, with the Big Ten that still – they recruit a lot of great both with both, but they still have a lot of great he also He's too. also playing on a very good quarterback uh, program. Obviously, right. uh, Lincoln Riley knows, knows yeah. his a little thing or two when it comes to quarterbacks. Edge Jalen Hurts. He asks everybody that's gone through and through him NFL quarterbacks now most of these kids they want to go through Lincoln Riley because a lot of them be, have been become successful in the NFL and, right. and have done pretty well ever since they went to that next level so I I think Caleb Williams will be up for a Heisman Trophy he he, he should be I mean his numbers show that he should be the question is when you look and you, you compare and contrast some of these other quarterbacks and looking at the like Speedy was saying you, you look at the program does the program fit the quarterback that is going to be right. uh, in the process of winning that, you know, that prestige uh, Heisman Trophy. If he doesn't have Lincoln Riley, is he this good? Is what I'm thinking. That's it's more true of what too. I'm getting That's at. True because it's even if they're on a team that might be more talented or higher ranked than USC is, like, is it automatically going to translate for what he is? Because he's he was kind of raw last year too. He took over mid season mm. for Spencer Rattler, who Errol's not a big fan of. No, I hate him. Yeah, I no, hate I, that kid. I'm with you on that. I can agree with you on that. I've spoken about Sp- Spencer. For for many, many, many years. It's been like three years I've since he's come out of high school, QB1 on Netflix. I watched that kid, and I know quarterbacks are cocky. He is one of the most cockiest people I have ever seen. You haven't done anything. You were in high school. You're the number one prospect. Who cares, okay? Go play college ball. Go to the NFL and have to compete against all the other quarterbacks that were just as good as you or even better. This kid, since day one, you know, the stories that you heard about him in high school and then his parents, he walks around like he's won something. What have you won? You've won nothing. And you couldn't even keep your job in Oklahoma. Where are you now? Oh, I'm sorry. You're on, you're in North Carolina, South Carolina. South Carolina. Okay. Carolina. You're, you're, and you were supposed to be a top top draft pick, you're not even going to be drafted in the, in the first three rounds. Neither Spencer Rattler nor Oklahoma wins in this. He's a joke. Right. Well, a and, joke. and that was a little condemning of Lincoln Riley. Could Lincoln Riley recruit and develop his own quarterback? Because it was a transfer of Baker Mayfield. It was a transfer of Kyler Murray. It was a transfer in Jalen Hurts. And, you know, uh, except for Caleb Williams. Now, obviously, he was recruited by Lincoln Riley. But that was kind of the, the thing that Lincoln Riley said, I, as soon as I saw this kid, this is the kid that was built to, to run my offense. And when you are that type of talent and you can't even be productive for the coach that says you fit my offense perfectly, yet in year two, I'm going to bench you. Again, <laughs> what has Spencer Rattler done? He's done nothing. <laughs> nothing. He's a waste of space. But, John... We really appreciate your time. As always, we want to get you on before the season's over because I want to know your take. If Michigan makes it to that Fab Four, where does Michigan go? Do they win the national championship finally? That that will be the question. Obviously, the two favorites, Ohio State and Georgia. I know you hate Ohio State. You're a Michigan guy, but... Well, I want. I just. I want to know. I mean, I. I don't. I know you guys got to get to break, but why do you? Are you just discounting Michigan? Like, what (laughs) has Ohio State? Ohio State goes to Northwestern, and don't give me the bullshit excuse about oh, it was windy, it was raining. They've got a stable of running backs that they could turn to. Yet they still throw the ball twenty six times. Are you kidding me? Travion Henderson didn't do anything until the late in that game. I think, and then he got hurt. I love pissing off Michigan. <laughs> yeah, I'll look for your your text for uh, like November twenty four, two days before that. Oh, I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna Speedy. tell Speedy to get you on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah let's go. But, hey, maybe at that time he'll be the head coach of the Detroit Lions. Though, so. <laughs> yeah, I have to get through my PR at that time. <laughs>
Hopefully Dan Snyder is also gone from the team by then, too. Uh, yeah, may, maybe you'll take over for Jeff Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> See, maybe, maybe you can maybe maybe you can go by the you could you go uh, by the Washington Commanders, then you can also coach them too. Once yeah, Dan Snyder's yeah. gone, well, finally forced I'm out. The irony of Ursay oh. saying that the NFL had to force Snyder out. Like, are you kidding me? And then he goes and hires Saturday. Hey, we're back where we started, aren't we? We're right back there. Oh, John, you are one piece of work. Thank you for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you next time.